What's up everybody? I am not sure what's true or false in this video. This is a gossip video just like on a gossip blog website. So I take rumor and tea and gossip from online, from magazines, from books, from wherever I can find it and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now let's get to the video. I know I told y'all on the last video but baby let me tell y'all again about my bright self. Now listen now. They are a monthly wine club that matches wines to your taste buds honey. Your taste buds and takes those wines from all over the world and delivers them to your doorstep. This is not a hit or miss type thing, honey, because again, you have to take a test telling them what your favorite tastes are, your favorite flavors, to pick the correct wine for you. Once again, let me tell y'all the wines I got this month. Bell Fleet, Silver Skate, and Obscura. And I hear y'all now, oh, my local supermarket, they got enough wine. Baby, let me tell you something your local supermarket don't do. They put little wine education cards in the box. And they suggest pairings, give you details about what's in the wine, even tells you at what room temperature to store your wine. Bright Cellar's got it going on. You are not gonna find nothing like that at no doggone grocery store. You heard the word. Bright Cellar's got it going on. That is why I'm giving you guys 50% off of your first six bottle box of wine. Honey, $55 plus tax for six bottles of wine. All you gotta do is click my personal link in the description. Go on ahead once again, stop wasting time, click the link. Now it's time to get to the meat of the video, honey. The scalding hot tea on Mrs. Stevie Nicks. <laughs> and if this tea has already been out there, then oh well. Now, let's get to it. Stephanie Stevie Nicks was born on May 26, 1948 in Phoenix, Arizona. Her father's name was Jess and he was the president of Greyhound and her brother's name was Barbara and I do believe, but I'm not sure, that Barbara was a stay-at-home mom. Now from the looks of it, Stevie had a great relationship with both of her parents and it looks like her father Jess helped to bring her musical side out very early. Her mother on the other hand was said to be overprotective, but she did bring out the fantastical or the fantasy side of Stevie. She would always tell her daughter fairy tales and myths and she basically helped construct that mystical, mythical side of Stevie Nicks. And this musical as well as this mystical side would stick with Stevie from childhood all the way up until adulthood. Actually, it's still sticking with her right now. Now, as Stevie grew, since she had such an affinity for music and loved it so much, it is said that she spent all of her free time listening to records. And to her family's surprise, a family that loved country, Stevie would always listen to R&B music. She listened to the Shirelles. She listened to the Supreme. She listened to Martha and the Mandela's, the Four Tops, people like that. And when she did this, again, her family would look at her like she had two heads because they didn't understand where this came from, but they still loved their baby girl very much. So much so that as her musical talents grew, her parents supported her in every way. They even went and bought her a guitar at the age of 16. And as soon as Stevie got her guitar, honey, she started writing music. She soon found others with kindred spirits just like hers and in high school she ended up joining a band. This band was called Changing Time. But baby it was in her senior year of high school that something would happen that would change Stevie's life forever. And this something or this somebody was named Lindsay Buckingham. Now apparently this Lindsay was a musical kid just like Stevie and on this particular day he ended up going to some sort of religious party or gathering with a whole bunch of other teams. And while he's there, he's hanging around looking all cool, you know. And then he spots a piano, child. He go over there and try to show off his little talents, baby. Sit on the piano and start playing California Dreaming and singing and stuff. Stopped into the church. I passed along on the way. Well, I got down no more. Well, just so happened Stevie Nicks is at this very same party. So she starts to hear this music and this singing and she walks over there to it and she sees the most handsome, dreamiest guy that she's ever laid eyes on. You know, and this guy's got this shaggy curly hair, got these big blue eyes that look like swimming pools. And so this beautiful guy with this beautiful voice is just sitting down on this piano playing this music and Stevie is pretty much instantly smitten. So she prances her little tail over there and sits beside him and starts singing with him. And per the rumor, not only is she singing, she's harmonizing with him. And this really piques his interest in her. So they end up having a very fun night talking, flirting, and chatting. And even though they seem super mesmerized with each other when the party is over they don't see each other for like the next two to three years and in those two to three years Lindsay had ended up joining a band called Fritz and this band wanted a female lead singer so when Lindsay heard this he's like hmm I remember this beautiful girl that sang with me at this religious party 
let's call her. So they do call Stevie, she immediately remembers the gorgeous Lindsay, and she immediately goes to join the group Fritz. And uh, Stevie, Lindsay, and Fritz, the band, baby, they done pretty doggone well, honey. They were opening for like Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin and possibly other big names. And just to stick this little bit of gossip and tea in here, rumor says that they used to sing some song about drug addiction or heroin or something like that, and Stevie used to like act it out, like shoot up the heroin and then she used to like go through addiction, but even Stevie doing the junkie itch and all this kind of stuff could not save Fritz, the band disbanded. And this was said to have happened in 1971. Now although while Stevie and Lindsay were actively with Fritz, they were dating other people, after Fritz disbanded, they spent a lot of time together, you know, they started grooving together, Together and eventually they ended up becoming a couple and fell very deeply in love. And not only that, it's also said that they both ended up enrolling in college just in case the rock and roll thing didn't work out. But then Lindsay took on this attitude of, I love music. I love music. That is what I want to do. So there is no backup plan. Like this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get paid doing something that I love. So he was ready to drop out of college and just kind of pursue his musical career. And he asked Stevie to come with him. And Stevie was a little iffy but not for long soon she decided that she wanted to join her man baby you know and she wanted fame and things like that as well so it's claimed she called her father she asked her father for permission is it okay for her to drop out of college and try to do this musician thing with Lindsay full time her father gave her the go ahead and so that is what she did and soon Lindsay and Stevie started to perform and write music together so at this point in the story Stevie and Lindsay have become musical partners as well as lovers and things are magical between them when it comes down to the music and child per the word on the streets only the music because baby when it come down to the other side of things honey it's claimed that stevie was out here working her behind off child said that stevie was a waitress busting her tail and was the only one working to provide for her and Lindsay. and guess what Lindsay was doing honey said Lindsay was sitting at home smoking drugs all day hanging with his homeboys having a good time now it is claimed that what he was supposed to be doing was writing music and he was writing music i'm not gonna take that away from him but they said just as much as his behind was writing music his behind was out there having a good time as well and shy some of the real messy rumors say that he also was entertaining other women all this while stevie is at work busting her behind and the word on the street say stevie wasn't blind and she wasn't dumb she knew you know what i'm saying but she loved Lindsay, and she also believed in this dream so you know she just kept right on at it now this went on for some time before Lindsay and stevie had enough music put together where they can record their own record but when they did they called themselves buckingham nick and they went to be signed to Polydor Records. So they went in the studio and recorded their little music and they ended up taking photos for the album cover but on this album cover it had Stevie and Lindsay nude from the waist up. And honey the gossip on the street say that Stevie was upset honey. Said she was in the studio like you know I'm just not comfortable with this you know what I mean this is not becoming of me why do I have to have my top off and just really causing ruckus about it because she was ashamed to have her top off. But child these messy folks out here say that Stevie ain't had to worry about it because baby they said not nobody saw that dog on album cover child wasn't nobody checking for buckingham nick so uh stevie you could have just kept your shirt on or off it didn't matter sis and on top of the album not selling there was more bad news for buckingham nicks because polydor records ended up dropping them soon after even with them being dropped though they did have spirits of warriors and they continued to push they continued to gig they continued to write they continued to try for their success and rumor has it that Stevie was showing up doing the most because, honey, they said on top of that first waitressing job, she got another waitressing job. And then after that, she was also cleaning houses. So she was really trying to do anything she could to keep them afloat until they could get to where they needed to be. Luckily, though, Lindsay was able to start pulling a little bit of his own weight because he ended up getting a good tourist gig with the Everly Brothers. And Gossip says it was while they had this time apart that Stevie Nicks actually wrote the song Rhiannon. And let me sprinkle this little bit of tea over here. Now, Stevie Nicks is a um, gifted songwriter regardless, okay? But child, let me go ahead and tell y'all, the messy streets say that Stevie had a little push behind her when it came to Rhiannon, and the reason she was able to write that so well is because, baby, she had started using cocaine. Now, this was supposedly her first usage of the drug, and per Stevie, you know, it was introduced to her as like a pick-me-up. It was a party drug, a maintenance drug, like I said, a quick pick-me-up. But the problem was, is that for Stevie, not only was it a pick-me-up, it was a keep-me-up. And baby, believe me, she stayed up. But we will 
we'll get into that a little bit later. For now though, both Lindsay and Stevie were still finding their way, and then out of nowhere, a producer named Keith Olsen, which it wasn't really out of nowhere, they already had dealings with this guy, some people even say that they were living with this guy for a time, but as I was saying, Keith Olsen ended up playing a Buckingham Knicks record for Mick Fleetwood. Now Mick Fleetwood was the drummer and a founding member of a band named Fleetwood Mac. And this band Fleetwood Mac had been through it baby. They had lost one member because that member actually slept with Mick Fleetwood's wife. They lost another member to a cult and then they lost their founding member, their main lead singer, this guy named Peter Green. It was just like one day he was there and then he wasn't like seriously one day he was there he was playing the biggest shows his name was getting so big and then he just stopped showing up and then next thing I know he was uh, on the streets on drugs child just like happened kind of crazy like but anyways the point that I'm trying to make is that Fleetwood Mac was a good band but they just could not keep members and at this point in time let me tell you the actual members that they had there was Mick Fleetwood the drummer guitarist John McVie and piano player or keyboard player Christine McVie. And John McVie and Christine McVie were actually married. And they had just lost a guitarist, I do believe, which is why now they were looking to replace that guitarist. That's why he was even listening to the Buckingham Knicks record. And when he heard that record, Lindsey Buckingham was killing it so good on that doggone guitar that Mick Fleetwood was like, hey, I want him in the band now and so Keith or Mick Fleetwood himself depending on who's telling the story called Lindsey Buckingham and was like hey Fleetwood Mac want you to join their band they want you to become their lead guitarist and when Lindsey heard this offer and he was like hey yeah I'll join you but my girlfriend Stevie has to be in the band with me you know you either take me and her or you don't get me at all and Mick Fleetwood was like uh sir we didn't say nothing about your girlfriend we said you but he wanted Lindsey Buckingham bad, but it was not his decision to make. He took the decision to Christine McVie. Since she was the only female in the band, he just didn't want to just bring in another female and make her uncomfortable because baby, y'all know females can get catty, honey. And he didn't want none of that. And Christine ended up vibing with Stevie Nicks. You know, she was like, you know, I can get on with this girl. It's pretty cool. She can join the band. So that is when Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks became a part officially of Fleetwood Mac and this is said to have happened in 1975. As soon as they joined the band Mick Fleetwood is like jumping out of his boots. He cannot wait to get his new lineup into the studio and their first album they record is called Fleetwood Mac which and on this album they have some mega hits such as Rhiannon, Monday Morning, and Over My Head and the album does wonderfully. It really lets them know that they finally have the correct people in the band. This is it. But it was while they were still riding high from the success of the Fleetwood Mac album that they would write something so incredible, so magnificent, so impeccable y'all that other artists could only dream of making an album so all around complete baby I'm trying to tell you honey and this album was called Rumors. Quite possibly the biggest album of the decade. And I told you the Fleetwood Mac album had some mega hits, but Baby Rumors had some monster hits, honey. I'm talking about straight beast mode. And I ain't even got to name many, honey. I can just say two. Go Your Own Way and Dreams. You get the hint, baby. I ain't got to say no more. And these smash hits established Fleetwood Mac as all-stars, as superstars. And it also established Little Miss Stevie Nicks as their leading lady. Couldn't be touched by nobody. If you tried, your hand might set on fire, baby. That's just how hot she was walking. And she knew it, child. Baby, all you saw was... With her tambourine, honey, just going everywhere with it. And now, since we are at the point where Stevie Nicks has made her success, baby, y'all know what time it is, baby. It's time to get to the messy, scandalous, all over the world. Hot pipe and tea. And let me stop y'all now. If y'all are rock or die Stevie Nicks fans and you can't hear nothing negative about her, baby, go ahead and either shut your ears, close your eyes, or exit the doggone video because this is some tea, honey. 
Let's get to it. Now, this first bit of tea is regarding Stevie Nicks when she was little. And I'm talking about like four or five years old type little. And I told y'all that her father helped her cultivate her musical side as she got older. But listen now, it was her granddaddy that truly started her on the path. And that's because her grandfather was a failed country singer who had big ambitions of making his career into a real thing. And one day that granddaddy was just visiting Stevie's parents' home and and he was just sitting on the porch and he was singing some country song and Stevie heard this in the house and got so excited and brought her little bebop head on outside and started singing along with him and to everybody else it was just cute like you know oh listen to her she's doing so good but see to that granddaddy who already had an ear for music he heard something different this little baby could harmonize it basically came quite natural to the child and when her granddaddy hears this he's like we doggy we got us a real singer on our hands and immediately starts taking Stevie on little gigs with him. You know what I mean? They're going down to the clubs and the little juke joints. I don't know if they had juke joints, but just going down to the little parties and clubs and they're playing and singing together. And this was all well and fine, but the parents just thought this was like a passing fancy. You know what I'm saying? They didn't really think it was that serious. Well, soon the granddaddy was like, uh, no, we need to take this baby and she need to help me get my career off the ground. Like we can really make something of each other. We can really do this. He wanted to start recording, like start gigging all over the country and this is when uh Stevie's parents were like no and the granddaddy was like uh what you mean no why are you trying to stop my bag why are you trying to stop my money and the parents were like we're not trying to stop your money like our daughter is only four or five she's too young we're not gonna allow you to go gigging all over the country with our child and baby they say the granddaddy went off baby he went off on everybody but still no matter how many temper tantrums he threw Stevie's parents said no so child guess what granddaddy little parents Daddy messy self did. Granddaddy said, okay, that's fine. And so they thought everything was cool, baby. Them folks didn't hear from Granddaddy for two years, honey. And not only did Granddaddy cut them off, Child Stevie was sitting up there trying to call and ask for him. Maybe he cut a little curly head off too. Then you got this strange little tea about Stevie performing in a high school talent show. She was supposed to perform alone, I believe, but she ended up performing with her father. And then they get on stage and instead of singing, Stevie starts laughing. Like, I mean, she is just laughing, cutting up, hee hee ha ha, and then her daddy start laughing with her, and then while they're laughing, Stevie pees on her, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm sorry, but, uh, the folks say that Stevie just stood there laughing and peed on herself, girl, and then the funny thing about it is that why in these latest videos is everybody peeing on their doggone self? This next rumor talks about the time that Keith Olsen loaned his car to Stevie and Lindsay. Now this is before Stevie and Lindsay made it big with uh, Fleetwood Mac. They were just struggling and together and their car had burnt out. So like I said, Keith Olsen loaned him his brand new Corvette, had just got it. And he was going to be out of town for a few days, so he told them that they could drive it. All he wanted them to do was take him to and from the airport. Child, that man went to the airport. They said as soon as that man got to his destination and to his hotel room, he got a phone call, child. His Corvette is in some woman's living room. Somebody he don't even know. And what has happened is Stevie was the one to take him to the airport and she didn't really know how to drive a stick shift. But she did make it back home. The problem is that she got out of the car, went and got in the bed to go back to sleep, but she parked on a hill. She did not put any type of emergency brake on or anything like that. So while Stevie is in the bed snoring, the car has rolled down the hill and went into some woman's living room, child, just crashed into the whole house. Now listen at this story. This story is about when Stevie Nicks was singing with Fritz. Now, while Stevie was in the band Fritz, I've already told y'all that she would act up getting high and all this kind of stuff, just act stuff out. Well, it is said that she had created some jealousies in the band because some of the guys were sort of jealous of her. They felt like she was always trying to steal the show and people just felt like it was her band because she was a show stealer. But nobody would really seriously voice their opinion. Nobody would really just like get in her face and be like, hey, you need to stop doing what you're doing because of course Stevie is a female. She's very small. She's got these big doe eyes you know so you know the guy's hearts would kind of melt and all this good stuff but child one time it was a woman she made mad and nine times out of ten you can't fool no other woman with no doggone big eyes and sex appeal so let me tell y'all what happened so Fritz, Stevie, and the Fritz band, they're singing at this show, and they are like just killing it. Fritz is just singing a long time. They're hogging the stage. Stevie, of course, is doing her little dances and acting things out and all of this good stuff. And if you did not know any better, you would be mistaken into thinking they were the main headliners. Well, they were not. Janis Joplin and her band were the main headliners. 
Baby, them folks say Stevie was just a dancing and getting down and doing all that kind of stuff. Janice came stumping from that doggone dressing room, peeked her head out on the stage and was like, get off the stage. Get y'all tails off the stage right now, taking up all this doggone time. What's wrong with y'all? This is my show. Honey, they said when Janice came out there doing all that, Stevie behind disappeared into thin air, honey. She was not on that stage anymore. Child, the folks couldn't even find her, but when the audience looked, Stevie was over there hiding behind the speaker, girl. But I don't blame Stevie Littell. Child, if Janice got the screaming like that, I'd probably be gone too. Now let's get into this bit of tea. And this is where people are asking if Stevie Nicks ever got breast implants. And from what I saw, yes, you know what I'm saying? But it seems like she admitted to breast implants. As a matter of fact, Stevie Nicks seems like she was a lot like Patti LaBelle as well as Shaka Khan. These ladies never really hide what they do. Y'all know I love folks like that anyway, baby. But anyways, they're not ashamed. They don't hide what they do. You know what I mean? They just do what they do. So, um, yes, it looks like Stevie Nicks did indeed get breast implants. However, I do believe in the end she ended up getting her breast implants removed because, if I'm not mistaken, she may have caught an infection. Now, child, let's get into some of the juicy rumors because, see, these rumors involve Stevie and Lindsay. Now, if you are a Stevie Nicks fan or a Fleetwood Mac fan, you pretty much already know that Stevie and Lindsay had this big breakup when they were in Fleetwood Mac. But what I found and what seems like a lot of people didn't know is that Stevie Nicks and Lindsay had been having problems in their relationship. It said that they had broken up numerous times. But per Stevie, they never stayed apart or she never stayed moved out because she said she didn't have any money to care for herself. But girl, I'm sorry, but if that other T was to be believed, the one that said that you were working those jobs to hold down the fort and you were making all the payments, so now all of a sudden if y'all break up, you can't support yourself? Girl, you ain't fooling nobody. Like, it's fine. We've been there. Everybody has been hung up over a man, you know what I'm saying? Keep on going back even though this man is doing you wrong. You know, you can just be honest with us, girl. We know why you went back. But to give more gossip about Stevie and Lindsay's relationship, word on the street says that by the time they were writing for rumors, Stevie and Lindsay had already broken up for good. And it's claimed it's because Lindsay Buckingham was like a jerk. Like, big time jerk. Baby, the folks say that Lindsay was controlling. He like to have everything his way and get this not only with stevie baby they say he was acting like that with the whole doggone band child of folks say that he was so obnoxious that veteran john mcvee had some doggone words for lindsey buckingham like lindsey would be acting all tough and telling folks what to do and throwing his weight around and stuff like that baby they said john was like do you know who you're talking to? I am effing McV, and you don't talk to me like that. I don't take lip from a newcomer like you. Baby, the folks say Lindsay backed on off, honey. Say he ain't want none of that smoke. But to be fair with Lindsay, it is said that he was a perfectionist. I'm not sure that he was just really trying to be an a-hole. He just was a perfectionist, and he felt like his way was better than everybody else's. And it just came off as very brash. And let me give you an example of the things he used to do. Like Mick Fleetwood, I've already told you guys, he was the drummer, okay? Why would Lindsey Buckingham, who is the guitarist, the lead guitarist, like put down his guitar and go and sit in the drummer's seat and start playing this little basic behind beat and like basically telling Mick, hey, don't you think this will work better? Like, listen to what I'm doing. I think this will go better with the song. So Mick would kind of respond like, you know, hey man, I'll take that into consideration. You know, we'll see about that. Child, you know, John McVie was sitting over in the corner like he better not come over here he know what's waiting on him over here and so this is the way Lindsay buckingham was doing with the band so you could imagine the way that he was doing with stevie nicks or the way it said and alleged he was treating stevie nicks it is said that he was like super controlling it would be super possessive over her and with her and would get very angry with her especially if she did something in a way that he didn't like as a matter of fact it's claimed that Lindsay buckingham is the one who forced stevie nicks to take that album cover, the one where she didn't have the shirt on, it's claimed that uh, Lindsay Buckingham was the one who forced her to do that. And see, in regards to their relationship, the problem was that Lindsay supposedly had all of this control over Stevie, but she had none over him. After rumors, it just really seemed like Lindsay and Stevie's relationship just could never be repaired. Was so much screaming and yelling and fussing. As a matter of fact, it's claimed it got so bad that Stevie went around telling people that at the very end of their relationship, Relationship, Lindsay actually put hands on her like he actually pushed her down and it said that that is when Stevie drew the line and was like no you know this is it I'm done and that is when she actually left him and after she actually left Lindsay honey that's a whole new wave of piping hot tea to pour in our cup 
Now, honey, the folks say that they don't know if Stevie was trying to get back at Lindsay or what she was doing. But they say what they do know is that Stevie Nicks started laying it low and spreading them wide, honey. And I'm talking about wide and all outside. The first man in her trap was Mr. Dunn Henley of the Eagles. And baby, you know they say when Stevie started dating Dunn Henley that Lindsay started to act up because it's claimed he was jealous. He started to pick on Stevie, you know, over any little thing. He also started to mock her. And while all of this talk makes Lindsay Buckingham sound like a big mean monster, and maybe he was, baby, it's claimed that he was not acting alone, honey. Stevie Nicks had some mess she was doing her own self. For one, the gossip on the street says that Stevie had always acted jealously. It is claimed that even when she saw Lindsay Buckingham in a room writing songs with Christine McVie, the other woman in their band, that Stevie threw a fit. She was very upset. She was like, you know, why are you sitting up here in the room with her writing a song? Like, what's going on here? And then there's this rumor about the way that she acted towards a girl named Carol Ann, because it's claimed this Carol Ann girl started dating Lindsay Buckingham. So, since she's dating Lindsay, she's starting to be around the band a little bit. Well, honey, don't you know that Carol Carol Ann had the nerve to wear black while she was hanging out with Fleetwood Mac. And if you know Stevie Nicks, black was all about her. You know, she's always into this witchy stuff. She'd wear this black lace. Well, Carol Ann had it on, baby. And Stevie didn't waste no time taking that woman by the arm and pulling her out into the hallway and letting her know, hey, listen, <laughs> I know you're sitting up there dating my sloppy seconds, my leftovers, but uh, this black stuff you're wearing, no, ma'am, that's not going to fly. I am the only one in Fleetwood Mac that wears black. That's always been me, and that always will be me. So perhaps the next time you hang around with your little boyfriend, you might want to wear another outfit. And then the gossip also says that while Stevie Nicks is always sitting up here pointing a violent finger to Lindsay, you know, oh, he pushed me, oh, he hit me, and all this kind of stuff, baby, the folks say that she was not a shrinking violet her own self, says she had some problems too. So really when it comes to Stevie and Lindsay, it really seems like the jealousy and the meanness and the anger it really seems like it goes both ways and that might have been cool but stevie nicks ended up creating more problems for herself when she was doing little trifling stuff trifling stuff like this you know i told you she was dating dun henley from the eagles right and dun henley was supposedly very good to her he treated her like a queen well, baby, the folks say that she cheated on him with two guys. The first man she cheated on him with was a songwriter for the Eagles. And this guy's name was John David Souther, or Souther. And they say that when Stevie was asking about it, you know, like, why did you cheat on Dunn with John? She had the nerve to say, well, Dunn was traveling a lot. You know what I'm saying? It was just a lot of time apart. So I just started spending time and going on dates with John David. And yes, that is scandalous and that is messy. But baby, it is the second person that she was rumored to have cheated with that caused everybody's heads to explode. Because this was her own bandmate. The very bandmate that invited she and Lindsay into the band in the first place, child. Mick Fleetwood. And yes, I do not care how you cut it. Some people will always look at this as trifling. That's just the way it was because Mick Fleetwood is their bandmate. You know, he been all in Lindsay's face, smiling and stuff like that, and you sleep with him? What? Child, just messy, 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 honey. Let me put this topper on it, y'all. Mick Fleetwood is married. He is married to Jenny Boyd, his wife. Yes, she cheated on him with another bandmate, but they have gotten back together and they're good now. Stevie did not care about any of that. Maybe she was so doggone bold, this woman was sitting on his lap. I don't know if this is at an award show or a party or what, but Stevie didn't care who saw her, you know what I'm saying? Um, she just ran with the vibe, and that is what makes this thing so big, because she didn't just sleep and cheat with Mick Fleetwood, like, one time. No, they were actively in a relationship, like, they were together while he was married, and she was dating Dunn Henley. She was dating these men simultaneously. And then somewhere along the line, she cut it off with Mick Fleetwood, was still in this relationship with Dunn Henley, and then her little gets pregnant. Now the folks on the street say the baby was done Henley's. Stevie Nicks say the baby was done Henley's. So child, the baby was done Henley's. Let's just leave it at that. But um, if you're wondering why she does not have a child, Stevie says that she aborted that child because she had to deal with the party and drugs. You know, she was a rock star. And speaking of drugs, we are about to get to that in a minute because that was a big deal as well. Now, I already told you that Stevie has been started cocaine. You know, she started even before she got worldwide famous. But it's claimed that during her first tour, that is when she got severely hooked on cocaine. 
And that was for two reasons. The first reason, it said that cocaine was Fleetwood Mac's roundup. All other groups just do things like, put your hand in, guys. Dun, dun. Everybody's putting their hand in. They're like, yeah, at the end. Um, Fleetwood Mac was not doing that at all. Their roundup was walking in a line, putting their hand out. And one person come, the other person put their hand out. And every time they put their fist out, somebody puts a line of cocaine on their fist. And then they... <sighs> and then walk on. So per the word, they were getting bumps of cocaine before every performance. So that's the first reason she got hooked on cocaine. The second reason is because that tour was grueling on Stevie Nicks. It was just really bad on her, you know what I mean? She was not used to sleeping in a car. She was not used to being up 24 hours a day. She started to get frail, you know, she wasn't eating right. And cocaine, that's really what she ate. That is what she ate, cocaine and water, pretty much. Child, let me tell you how high these people were getting. They were getting so high that on that Fleetwood Mac album, their first album, they were going to thank their drug dealer for inspiration. But uh, the drug dealer ended up dying. Back to Stevie. So yes, she had a huge problem. And it's even said at one point she uh, tried LSD. And per the word on the streets, and I don't know if people are just doing the blame game, but some people say that the drugs or the cocaine is what really made Stevie loose as a goose. That's what really made her, you know, open up. Child, other folks say that Stevie ain't needed no cocaine to open up and be loose as a goose. Maybe the folks say that Stevie Nicks been sitting up there messing with folks' men. Honey, word on the streets is that Stevie Nicks' first puppy love back in high school was somebody else's man. Her best friend's man. Stevie Nicks liked that boy, saw what she wanted, and she took that doggone boy from her best friend. But the tee hee hee was on Stevie V because baby, that best friend let Stevie have him for a little while, child. Then she snatched her dog on man back. Child, they say Stevie Nicks sitting up there crying and hollering and everything, baby. Even started to write her first song over there. And I know we're getting messy, but now it's time to get really, really dirty and messy. And also, let me say, take this little bit right here with a grain of salt because this right here actively came from a blog comment. They said it like it was true, and I don't know if it's true, but I'm about to say y'all. But anyways, this certain commenter said that they knew Stevie Nicks been loose as a goose because supposedly their granddaddy and his friend slept with her in the 1960s. And I know y'all are probably like, Ashley, why you got a hard time believing that? You know, they could have slept with her. I understand. You know what I'm saying? And also, it was the 60s, free love, you know, HIV and things like that. Deadly diseases weren't really around. So I know people did have a lot of freedom. They did what they wanted to do. But this is the reason why I say take this with a grain of salt and why it probably was a Stevie hater because child listen to the rest of the comment Tell my um yeah my granddaddy and his friend slept with her she was so doggone nasty when my granddaddy got home he had a rash as a matter of fact his rash got so bad that my grandma almost divorced him because he messed with Stevie Nicks like that right there kind of sounds like a lie I mean you know because Here's the thing, if Stevie Nicks was that dirty and she was messing around like that, like that would have already made the news by now. So I just, that one right there, I just, I don't believe that one. But regardless of the rumors that are probably fake or whatever, one thing that remains the same and one rumor that stays put is that Stevie Nicks supposedly messed with a lot of men. I'm going to name some for you. It's alleged that she messed with Brian Kane, Walter Egan, Tom Petty, Curry Grant, Joe Walsh, who was also with the Eagles band. As a matter of fact, I ain't even going to lie. The claims out here are that Stevie Nicks slept with everybody in the Eagles band. Like, that's just the rumors out here. Paul Fishkin, Jimmy Iovine, Dennis Dunstan, and y'all just like a whole lot more. I'm not going to spend all this time naming all of the men that she supposedly messed with. But it's a long list. And maybe she did, maybe she did not. And even if some of those names on the list were not true, it does seem to me like Stevie Nicks got around by Stevie's own words. Because from what I read, Stevie said in an interview, all of the men that I hung out with are on their third wives by now, and all of their wives are under 30. And then she said, oh, if I were to write what happened between 1972 and now, a lot of people would be angry with me. So I won't write a book until everybody is so old, they'll no longer care. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Maybe sister girl got around. Now listen to this. Y'all know I done told y'all about that first abortion that they said that Stevie Nicks had when she was supposedly pregnant with Dunn Henley's baby. Well, baby, the word on the streets is that Stevie Nicks has had at least four abortions. And child, don't ask me about no fathers, no daddies, no nothing, because I don't know none of that because that's where the rumor stops. Now, on top of these rumors about Stevie going out of her way to give it up to somebody, baby, it's also claimed that she had a problem with partying, partying. 
said that she was constantly out in these streets partying. In fact, listen to this story. Baby, the folks say that one night Stevie was just at a party, dancing it up, having a good time, doing all these drugs, said that she stayed at this party or this party went on for 48 hours straight. And then when the party was over and folks starting to leave, Stevie sitting up there talking about some, um, hello, is anybody around? Hello, where is everybody? And whole time she's saying this, the folks around her sitting up there looking at her face like she crazy. And of course, I imagine that scenario, but the reason I said that is because it's claimed that that whole 48 hours, Stevie Nicks, who cannot see well, was wearing contact lenses. And this is the 70s. Contact lenses were still very brand new, very young. Back then, you really needed to take them out of your eyes at nighttime. She did not, like I said, for 48 hours straight. So it's claimed that, you know, she went blind pretty much because it burned her cornea. And I think that next day, like she had to wear her eyes wrapped up for like two days or something like that and she did retain some of her sight but it never came back to 100% or she was already kind of blind it never got back to what it was before that night and speaking of Stevie being blind it is claimed that Stevie Nicks is blind as a bat people were often confused by her intensity and her willingness to connect with them because what would happen is they would be in a conversation with Stevie the whole time that they are conversing this is Stevie yeah no sure uh-huh. Yeah, no, tell me more. Just looking at them, you know what I mean? Staring them dead in their face, seemingly hanging on to every word that they say. But little did they know, in Stevie's head, she probably was thinking to herself, child, I wish these folks would shut up and get on out of my face. I don't know what they're talking about. And it just looked like she was paying close attention because she was blind. What she would really be trying to do is make out who she was talking to. She was trying to place their facial features because that's just how blind she was. So I am pretty sure that it was many a man that felt like, you know, oh, Stevie Nicks is super engaged with me. She wants me to give it to her and all this good stuff. And then child was sitting up there looking stupid when they seen her later on that night doing that same thing to somebody else. Sir, she ain't interested. She blind. Now, once Stevie Nicks became the established front woman of Fleetwood Mac, she started to create this persona, this really witchy persona. Now, I don't know if she practices witchcraft. I'm not sure. If you do, please do not cast a spell on me, ma'am, because I'm going to have to do some kind of mess and try to send it back or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, she, you know, she would wear the clothes, the dresses, and the hats, and things like that. And she was very mystical. She would dance all across the stage. In fact, the thing that endeared a lot of female fans to Stevie is when she first sang Rhiannon, and before she started to sing the song, she said, this is a song about a Welsh witch. Why she say those words, baby? Soon as she said that, people just went crazy, especially the witches, the real witches out here that practice witchcraft. Stevie instantly became Coven house mother. Coven leader every doggone way, honey. Folks making up spells with her name on it, you know what I'm saying? Folks shooting her good woman spell. And since she was this good white witch, she basically ended up having a gaggle of girls follow her around. These girls would dress like Stevie. They would wear their hair like Stevie. Like, they were basically like Stevie Jr. And they would be with her wherever she went. And they would protect her. They would pray for her. And it was just like, they. she was their queen. But that is the classy tea. Y'all already know the streets got some messy tea, child. Because, baby, the folks say that them girls just wasn't following Stevie around for no reason. Charlie said them girls were some groupies. They were sitting up there following her around. But, baby, they had their eye on every Tom, Dick, and Harry, honey. Ready to get in where they fit in. And then, y'all know I got to sprinkle a little more mess in here, too. It's also claimed that Stevie Nicks used these girls to help her seduce certain men. That if a man acted like he was not interested in her, but Stevie was interested interested in him, she would use these girls and they would seduce this man together. And so you have this man, he is in the bedroom and he sees all these witch booties around. The man wants to try out the witch booty. And so once he has been seduced, Queen Mother Witch walks out in all her charm. And if this has conjured images up into your head and you're wondering if Stevie switched for the other side, you know what I'm saying, and tried some things out with females, um, Stevie herself said that she just is not homosexual, you know what I mean? It's just not her. Now, because Stevie Nicks has just so much doggone tea, we are not going to do like we usually do and take a break to talk about her career, but I do want to drop some pointers in here. In 1981, she did start a solo career. However, she also still remained with Fleetwood 
it matter. And even though it was a new decade with new beginnings, Stevie's drug use remained and it was becoming worse and worse. Per gossip, she had blew so much powder up her nose that she had created a dime sized hole inside of her nose. So when you get a dime sized hole in your nose, um, you're not really trying to use your nose anymore. And I gotta be very careful with this because I believe this is what got my Grace Jones video messed up. But let me just say this. It wasn't up the nose anymore, but it's claimed that she would get whoever her assistant or somebody working with her to get a straw and they would bend down on their knees and they would blow through that straw up a crevice and, you know, that's how the stuff would get into her system. And that crevice is in the back, not the front, for some of y'all real messy folks out there. And so Stevie Nicks is just wild and all outside, child. She started making weird decisions around this time, such as marrying her best friend's husband right after her best friend passed away. On and all I can say is that her best friend's name was Robin Anderson, and it's claimed that she and Stevie had been best friends ever since childhood. Well, by this time, the 80s, Robin had ended up getting married to a man named Kim. They were happy she got pregnant, but then it was found that she had leukemia. So she ended up passing away from leukemia immediately after she gave birth to her child. Well, Stevie grieves for her friend, and I guess throughout this grief, Stevie felt like, oh, you know, since Robin is a passed away, I want to be a great godmother to this child. Now I just need to marry the child's father. Stevie felt like that was the best way out of all the ways, even though she just could have been a very involved godmother. But anyways, marrying this child's father, her best friend's husband, was the best way that she could be there for this baby. And that is what the heck she did. Some would say it possibly was like uh, three to six months after Robin passed away. But see, Stevie Nicks had done a lot of stuff, but this right here was one step too doggone far. You're doing too much, Stevie. You're doing too doggone much. And Stevie felt this. She felt this heat, she felt this pressure, and you know, maybe she had come back to her senses and she realized like, I probably shouldn't have done this. She and Kim ended up getting a divorce almost immediately. And then in 1986, things really started to go down the drain and turn really bad for Stevie Nicks. She started to suffer nosebleeds. She started to uh, black out. She started to fall down out of nowhere. She went to see a doctor and the doctor basically told her that, hey, like you're one puff away from a brain hemorrhage. You will die if you continue doing what you're doing. And Stevie was like, oh my gosh, you know, oh, thank you for telling me left the doctor's office and went and did more drugs. But to be fair, it did not last for long after this doctor's visit. Soon after, she did decide that, hey, she needed to get some help. So she ended up going to rehab. But unfortunately, sister girl ended up trading one drug for another one. Doctors prescribed her clonopin, which was a tranquilizer uh, drug, and she got hooked on that. And so people started noticing that the fun, outgoing Stevie, the one that was always up to something, was now very dreary and always wanting to be alone always tired, things like that. And another reason it probably took her a minute to get off of the clonopin because there was also things going crazy within Fleetwood Mac. Check this rumor out. This happened in 1987, supposedly. Fleetwood Mac is all together and they are touring. While Stevie Nicks is on stage, I guess she's singing or something. Baby, why come Lindsay comes out of nowhere and throws a good tar at the back of Stevie Nicks' head and then after he did that, he tried to kick that woman, child? And then that same year, something else crazy happened. And this is when the whole Fleetwood Mac band was at Christine McVie's house. And I guess everybody was just standing around and talking maybe about the old days and all of these old feelings came up. And before you know it, Stevie Nicks went and lit into Lindsay, honey. I'm talking about she was slapping them all across the face, beating them all across the chest. And then, child, she got the shock of her life, honey. And that's when Lindsay tried to start hitting her tail back. Stevie took off the running, child. She just running all across the house, running all down the hallways, and Lindsay was right on her tail. Stevie ended up running outside, running down the road. And when she got by the car, she started to slow down. Well, this was a huge mistake because Lindsay caught up to her behind. And as soon as he caught up to her, baby, he lit her tail up. He said, bow! And then he took her and uh, started choking her on the car hood allegedly and it's not no telling what would have happened but christine mcvee ended up coming outside and yelling for lindsay to stop she pulled him off of her and i think she even might have slapped lindsay but that day um fleetwood mac basically told lindsay like this is it you're never gonna put your hands on stevie again don't ask me if they told Stevie to never put her hands on Lindsay again. 
And really y'all, what it sounds like to me is that these two really still carried a torch for each other at that time. It really seems like they had some unresolved issues, you know what I mean? And it seems like Stevie had been wanting to slap Lindsay because of those girls he was cheating on her with and all this good stuff. And it seems like Lindsay been wanting to choke Stevie out because she slept with their bandmate Mick. After this incident though, it's claimed that Lindsay left Fleetwood Mac for a while and started to work on a solo project. And Stevie herself made more solo music as well. So moving along towards the late 80s, early 90s, Stevie is said to have had enough of drugs. Drugs from the streets, drugs from the doctors, she's just tired of it. But in order to see if she's really tired of it, there's another rumor I need to tell you. And this is the rumor that says that Stevie wanted to see exactly what this clonopin was doing to her. So it's claimed that she took her 30 day prescription and uh, forced her assistant to take that medicine, child. And when she saw the negative effects on the assistant, that is when she's like, oh, you know what? Like this drug has been doing me wrong. I want to stop. After that, she ended up going back to rehab, I believe, and that supposedly she's been drug free ever since. Now, after the 90s, there were still rumors that stuck around about Stevie Nicks messing around with multiple men. Some of these men were supposedly men that were helping her out with her solo career, you know what I'm saying? And she supposedly did things for people to lay tracks for her or certain musicians or, you know, supposedly done some things like kind of slept her way to the top, I guess. But outside of these little petty rumors and things like that, her life mostly became pretty quiet. And then in 2018, things came tumbling all down. And this is when Flo Fleetwood Mac supposedly put everything aside, all of their differences and everything like that. They all came back together and they started touring. Everything seemed great. And then suddenly out of nowhere, word on the street says that Lindsey Buckingham was suddenly just forced out of the group. Now per the gossip, and supposedly Lindsey Buckingham himself believes this, he believes that he was forced out of the group because of Stevie. He feels like Stevie basically told Fleetwood Mac, you know, it's either him or me. Something about she gave a long speech at an award ceremony or something like that. And I guess she felt like Lindsey was behind the stage laughing at her and pointing and stuff. She felt like he was mocking her, you know, and mocking her music and all of that good stuff. So she didn't like this and she told Mick and the rest of Fleetwood Mac that she would no longer sing with them if Lindsey Buckingham was in the group. Now, people start to do the little tomato tomato thing and be like, you know, well, that's not forcing him out. She just basically laid down her ultimatum. That's not forcing him out. Yeah, but the thing is that she is the lead singer of Fleetwood Mac. If your lead singer says that I'm going to leave the group if you do not kick this person out of the group, it kind of is forcing a little bit, you know what I mean? But again, all of this is alleged, I do not know. What I do know is that Lindsay's look curled up to the front head was uh, pushed out of the group. And again, from my point of view, from being on the outside looking in, I like, I don't know what's going on. I can't tell if these two hate each other or they love each other. What I do know is that those two act like they cannot be in the same doggone room without some doggone mess. Like, it just never can be regular between them. And like, I don't know if that means they're still carrying a torch for each other or they just really hate each other. But we are pretty much at the end of the Stevie Nicks video, but there are a couple of more things I wanna hit on. And that is this. Now Stevie Nicks has leagues and leagues, millions of fans. She has millions of them. people love her to death but she also has a group of haters. And haters are haters, you know what I mean? Everybody has them, I have haters. But the reason I brought this up is because those haters have said some things and I wanna know what y'all think about them. So they basically feel like Stevie Nicks, she's very egotistical. You know, she believes her own hype and she thinks she's some kind of queen or, or princess, you know, and sometimes she can very well be an ice queen or an ice princess if you do something that she does not like. Or it's like, um, you have to try to impress her to get anywhere. And they also feel like her whole witch thing is a gimmick and it paid off. So she basically transformed her whole image into this white witch and you know, she's all into witchcraft, but they feel like that's fake. What do y'all think about that? Do you guys think that Stevie has become too egotistical and does she feel like she's some kind of big time queen that everybody has to like answer to? Also, do you feel like the witch thing was a gimmick? There's also something else that they were um, upset about. Lindsay Lohan because it's claimed that I believe in 2009 um, somebody interviewed Stevie Nicks and they basically told her that hey they're looking into Lindsay Lohan starring in a movie as you and child says Stevie was like Lindsay Lohan 
uh, no, she is not going to play me. And then she went on to say, and if they do cast her in the movie, it's going to be a bum. It's going to be a failure because I will go everywhere and I will protest that movie and I will tell people that I did not give my consent. And then she went on further to say that I don't want Lindsay Lohan playing me. Instead of worrying about playing me, she needs to be worried about getting off of the drug and getting clean. And some folks just didn't like Stevie saying this. You know what I'm saying? Because they felt like, but ma'am, you wasn't saying this when you was out there drugging and drinking and doing everything. It took you forever to get off drugs. So now you're trying to say that something should stop this girl's career. But I say this, whether it is a double standard or not, that supposedly is uh, Stevie's opinion. And like y'all know on this channel, everybody has a right to their opinion. Whether we agree with it or disagree with it, it is what it is. So anyways, this is the end of the old Hollywood scandals video on Miss Stevie Nicks. Guys, please, if you like this video, please like the video. Click the thumbs up please guys it will help me so much with the algorithm also if you are new here please subscribe better yet if you old here please subscribe because I done found out that some of y'all tells me sitting up here watching me but don't want to sit up there and subscribe you know you're part of the scandalous squad because you're scandalous and um and yeah I'm not feeling good guys that's why my voice is like this but I love you guys so much I'm constantly working and we will be out with another video soon okay bye y'all